Hey folks, so last we left off with this thing, I was working on some mods with the uh, Joy-Cons. We got everything working, all is well, uh, but there was something else I wanted to do in the stream, and that was uh, repair the fuse in this Joy-Con. And I couldn't do that because I didn't have the proper parts available. Uh, well, I do now. So, let's get to it. Grab. So during that stream, which I guess I'll go ahead and throw a link down to the stream in the description if you're curious, um, I did do quite a lot of bitching about the specific feedback I received when I uh, shared my findings. And, um, long story short, I was wrong. They were right, but for the wrong reasons. I will, I'll die on this hill, I swear. So it turns out, uh, that the Joy-Con does not actually use a fuse. It does indeed use a zero ohm resistor. But, that is not the whole story. The Joy-Con uses a zero ohm resistor because they simply do not make fuses in 0201 size parts. Now, I, I don't know the specific reasoning behind using a, uh, a resistor instead of a fuse. All I know is that in this particular circuit, there is a zero ohm resistor used for its fusible properties, not a, um, what you call it, a fuse. Again, I am still quite confused on that front. I don't know why, but in my research, when I searched for 0201 size fuses, I found a whopping nothing, which led me look into something that I know uses a similarly size component for a similar function. So if we were to reference iPhones, I know they have a fuse for the backlight, quote unquote fuse. Um, it turns out those do the exact same thing. So in reading about how the iPhone fuses its backlight and protects that, I found out that yes indeed zero ohm resistors are used as fuses in some cases and this appeared to be one of those cases as well uh, now don't get me wrong it would be wonderful if oh I don't know maybe Nintendo themselves would publish the specifications for this part because I am 100% sure I am not the only person who has run into this issue but I can also tell you that bridging the fuse is not the solution. We want to replace it. All right, I think we should be good to remove this entirely. Pull this out. Boom. Bare motherboard. This is what we want. We boot up the soldering iron here. And let me show you the parts that I have purchased. I will throw a link to this in the description. I am fairly confident it is the right part, or at least it's right enough. But this is a zero ohm resistor rated for 1 20th of a watt in 0201 package. The specific part number is that mess right there, but again, I'll throw a link in the description. Um, I don't know specifically why... Yeah, I don't know. I, 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 can't, I can't explain it. I'm at a loss. So here's what I'm gonna do. Because this is such an absurdly small part, instead of even trying to zoom in with my phone, 
that's just not going to happen. Uh, we're going to use the microscope for that. And because of the angle, I am just going to record directly from the microscope itself. But I want to go ahead and start record. Uh, hopefully I'll find a way to sync that up, but we'll go from there. Cool, cool. So let us take a look at my current mess of things. You can see I was able to get two jumpers soldered in there. Um, believe me, I've come a long way in three years and looking at that does pain me, but it does work. Anyway, these leads, follow that, just run to a fuse with a nice crusty solder joint on it. But it has been working, so let us, let's fix this. I am going to zoom way out because I need more room to work, and that should be plenty. I'm going to use my huge soldering iron tip because it is what I am most comfortable with. And at the end of the day, that is the important part. Good. Did I just lift a pad? I may have just made this video twice as long as it needs to be. Let's clean that up and find out. Because I can't see through that flux. It might be fine. And my specific concern is I only hit one of those pads with the soldering iron and yet both wires came up. So either it was nothing but hopes and dreams holding that wire on, or I just lifted a pad. Uh, but no, I think I think I just got really lucky. Cause that looks good. All right. Flip that this way. Find the end of my solder. There it is. You know what? Let us. Make life easier with masking tape. stops moving every time I touch it. Uh, where? Oh, it's down here. Okay. Problem is, this component is in the way. doesn't matter that my soldering iron tip is huge because even my smallest ones are too big to fit between this capacitor and that battery terminal. But I'm not having any luck getting this thing to lift off. There we go. I'll replace that later. It needs to be right there. Safekeeping. Wow, oh, look at 
look at that. All this room to work with. And honestly, that looks like a lifted pad. Oh, well, maybe it's not. Whatever. I can't tell. I genuinely can't tell. Let's try cleaning again, though. This is not my regular area of expertise. This is well beyond me. But, oh, I suppose I could move that up a little. I'm sorry. As I launch that capacitor. Don't worry, didn't go anywhere right here. I'm going to drop it right in there. All right, so let us take a look at the new part. Nice and tiny. Let's see if I can extract this thing. I actually bought new tweezers just to uh, just to get this done. I was afraid that my existing tweezers would be way too fiddly. The existing tweezers being the ones on the right. And you know what? Looking at the two side by side on the scope, I probably could have made it work, but I'm still glad I got the new tweezers. They're, uh, they're much nicer. So yeah, the old tweezers are just some uh, generic ones I found on AliExpress. The new tweezers are engineer titanium tweezers. They're a little bit on the pricey side, but so far I am very happy with them. It's one of those uh, buy once, cry once situations. Jesus Christ. Alright, I lost it. Is that it? No, that's it. Oh, I lost it again. Maybe I should use the uh, microscope instead of trying to use my eyes. Trying to grab the thing without flinging it off. I needed one, but I bought like a hundred. So if I launch this thing, it's not the end of the world. There we go. I got it. Let's put it right there. One side soldered. Going into the other side now. Right, I'm not having any luck with that approach. Let's try this one. Oh, yeah, look at that. and soldered, come back to the top again. Boom! Alright, now I need to reinstall the big capacitor. Actually, let us double check with the multimeter.
So we will put, I believe that is the ground. Nope, so that's it. That should go to the bottom of the uh, fuse. Yep. And then I already know it's going to work, but ta-da! I know it works because I thought it was the ground. And I already had con continuity with a part up there. Anyway, let us get this capacitor reinstalled and then we can start re Ah, excuse me, reassembly. And then I can get this embarrassment off my desk and off my mind. Oh no, I don't want to desolder it, I wanted to move it. <sighs> it's in place, but I'm not happy with how crooked it is. I should just cut my losses, but... hell is that? Oh no! I got solder in something. Surprised I'm struggling with this so much. This isn't even a small component. I got the fuse in just fine, but I can't get this freaking capacitor in. I think part of the problem is the angle. There is definitely an easier angle to do this from, but I won't be able to capture footage if I do it from that angle. There we go. Perfect. Alright, now let's clean up this component and see what the heck I just did. Oh no, I think we're good. A little bit of solder to that side, and a little bit of solder to that side, and we're good. Let's get a new one. Is this the new one? Never mind. We have one that's still saturated. Fortunately, I did get solder on that test pad, which is sloppy. 
sloppy sloppy I hate it but if that is the only downside then so be it I think for my first time soldering something that small I did all right probably could have done it by hand but I think the microscope made things much easier fuzzies out. You know what? Let's just get another swab. I'm not sure if my microscope stopped recording at some point. I really hope it didn't, but it looks like it might have. So if it did, sorry, might have just lost footage, but I can't, I can't get that footage back. It's gone. That's looking good though. See, the fuse is nicely soldered. That might actually be too small a component. Looks like we might have been able to get away with 0402. Anyway. I think we're good with that. I am going to stop the microscope recording. Pull that off. End. How do I end? Oh, just hit the button once and we're good. Cool. Hopefully that has footage. I will splice it into the video. Assuming all went well. And let me go ahead and get this thing reassembled and we'll test it out. Look at that. Yeah, that was nuts. Okay. And if I keep this up, one day, I'll be doing stuff like that without even thinking about it. To be completely honest, I'm surprised I had as few problems as I did when I originally installed that bodge like three years ago. I'm just going to pull this joystick out, make my life easier, it's two screws. Scratch that. Whoops. I'm used to the other tweezers that don't grip nearly as uh, strongly.
Now, I was thinking about that uh, paper shim fix on the Joy-Cons a little while back, because of course, it's all I can think about. Um, I actually had the guy who published that fix, he showed up in the comments of my stream a little later uh, to preach his fix yet again. And I thought I was pretty clear about this, but I guess there was some room for interpretation. But my opinion on the matter is that the issue is not so clear cut and that it's quite a bit more complicated than VK wants to suggest. And I'm not arguing that shimming your joysticks with a little bit of paper card will actually alleviate the um, symptoms that you're experiencing such that you can actually use your Joy-Con again. Not arguing that. I fully believe that if I had a Joy-Con that was drifting and if I were to try shimming it, I believe that I would be able to start using that Joy-Con again. My argument was that the issue was actually quite a bit more complex and that shimming the Joy-Cons is not a fix, but rather a band-aid for the true problem. And the true problem will rear its ugly head eventually again. Now the point is somewhat moot because it turns a nigh unusable Joy-Con into a perfectly usable Joy-Con, but I believe that saying it's a permanent fix when really you're just buying another few years is probably foolish. But what do I know? He's clearly got more experience with this than I do, so... I'm actually going to try my own thing. You might have watched me do this earlier, but I didn't... I didn't clamp down the screws on the joystick. I actually left them quite loose so that if you were to press down on this, we're not putting pressure on the screw frames. The screws are just holding the whole unit in place for like twisting forces or like really rough play. But if you were to actually click down, it should be pushing the whole unit down into the battery frame here. So it's anecdotal. It's um, or rather it's a sample size of one And notably, I have never had any Joy-Con drift issues previously, so that alone should skew it, but hey, something. With this particular Joy-Con, I gotta be careful that the screws are a certain uh, torque, torque down a certain measure anyway. That is to say, slightly loose because my buttons are slightly too big. Okay. What am I missing? I'm missing this thing. Putting that connector under the battery tree it was so dumb. I mean, I guess they had to do it to make this specific design work, but 
still really dislike it. Just feeding the connector in, I'm not actually installing it. Now I'm installing it. Oh, hey! I think we're good to go. Interesting how these are magnetic now, but they weren't during the stream. Of course not, that would be too easy, right? it out and I know it's already working because it woke up my switch when I did that but uh controllers and sensors test buttons No, I don't want that. B. I want control sticks. Yeah, it all seems to be working. So let us grab that out of there, and it is working wirelessly. Let's try this out again. I am exactly where I left off because I haven't been playing on this switch. Yeah, like I said last time, I think I can I can cheese this by just firing off magic missiles and standing on these crates, but I'll run out of mana eventually and then I'll run out of mana potions. Yeah, they got me. Oh well, doesn't matter. I'm not too concerned. But it is working. Let's double check it works. Uh, docked. I don't see why it wouldn't, but it works wireless. Oh, let's see if it's charging. That makes more sense, doesn't it? I mean, it shows it's charging, but the only way to really find out is, I guess, if I use it enough until it dies, and then try recharging it. Or even just see if it fully recharges. Um, but I don't know. I think I'll end the video here. Um, if I don't, <laughs> if this is the actual end of the video, then it did work and there are no further issues. But, you know, if I break in with an addendum, then, you know, something happened. But anyway, yeah, I will go ahead and throw a link in the description to these parts. I'm not 100% sure if these are the exact specific recommended. This is the replacement part, but it seems to have worked for me. But of course, I have been using it for all of 30 seconds. So yeah, thanks for watching, guys. I hope this was helpful. The left Joy-Con, the process is identical, but the fuse is in a different location. I will go ahead and throw a link to 
uh, my Reddit thread where you can read through that conversation where someone insisted that they were uh, zero ohm resistors and I insisted that they were fuses and they insisted I was wrong and they offered no explanation. Um, anyway, in that thread is my research on both Joy-Cons. It shows the location of the fuse in the left Joy-Con if you want to replace that. Uh, and I guess... Well, shoot, I'll, I'll make a whole new thread. I said I was going to do that when I got this fixed and working. Uh, but otherwise, that's all I've got. Thanks for watching, guys. I hope this helped at least someone out there. And uh, keep it cool, I guess.